Okay, we are talking about equivalent fractions again because it is just that important. You're gonna be using this skill all the time when you're working with fractions. So let's review. Last time we talked about creating an equivalent fraction using multiplication. Really, that's just saying we're getting more parts. We're multiplying so we have more parts in the whole. So I can multiply this by anything, but I think I will just start with multiplying it by three. I want three times as many parts as I have now. I got five now, but I want three times as many. So I'm gonna multiply each of those fifths by three. So I'm gonna have three times as many parts, each of those fifths. Now I'm not one big chunk, they are three smaller chunks. So all together I have to say, okay, what did I just create? I go back to the first day of fractions when I try to name a part, how many parts in the whole? There's 15 and that's one of them. Okay, so I've created 15 ths. Now I can't just give you one of them, that would not be the same amount. I have to give you, I can see visually that I've given you three of them. But we can see here that I've, if I've made three times as many parts, I have to give you three times as many of them in order for it to equal the same amount. So one fifth is the exact same amount as three fifteenths. Uh, you might notice that this number that we're multiplying is a fraction that represents one whole, right? Well, think of the identity property. Any number times one is gonna just be the same amount, right? Well, it's the same thing for fractions. This number times one is gonna be the same amount. It's just in a different form, right? There's more parts or pieces. Well, let's go ahead and explore what it looks like when we divide to generate equivalent fractions. All right, let's take this fraction, two fourths. Um, when I'm dividing, I'm gonna be ending up with fractional amounts that have fewer parts or bigger chunks, if you wanna think about it that way. So I have four parts in the whole right now, those are fourths. If I divide um, this, the fourths, think about dividing these four parts among two people, how many do each person get? So four divided by two is two. And I can't give you the same amount of pieces. I also have to divide the number of pieces I'm giving you by two. And so two divided by two is one. Let's analyze and see what, what happened to our model when we divided by two. So four parts divided just into two, two put, divided by two. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these four and I just want two parts. I want to divide that number of parts by two people and it happens to come out to be halves. So when I'm dividing, I'm actually gonna end up with a larger part and that equals one half. Once again, we have divided by one whole fraction and I just, got, that guided me by the number of parts that I wanted to have. That's what made me choose that number to divide by. Let's do a few more. I'm gonna write just more models. Okay, four twelfths. I wanna create a new fraction, an equivalent fraction that equals the exact same amount, but it has a fewer number of parts. So um, what can I divide this by? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and divide it by fourths. So 12 divided by four. So if I took 12 pieces and divide them into four parts divided by four, how many parts would I end up with? So 12 divided by four is three. So I'm gonna end up with thirds. So I'm take this dividing it by three instead of adding or multiplying the three parts, I'm almost taking them back away. And what I will end up with is thirds once again. Okay, and I might have to adjust my model a bit to show that. But I've created an equivalent fraction. Twelfths divided by four is gonna create three parts. And then I can't give you the same amount. I have to divide the top number by the same, four divided by four is one. And I can see that four twelfths is the same as one third. And I can see visually that it's the same amount as well. Remember, we can't rely on models. That's not perfect thirds by any means, but they're a good way for us to think about fractions. This is what I can count on. I can count on the fact that dividing four twelfths by four fourths is gonna give me one third. I can count on the math to be precise. My model is just for me to look at it and get. Okay, let's try some now when we are not using a model. We're just gonna use our mathematics, mathematics skills. Um, okay, we have four sixteenths and I want to have a fractional amount 
that has four times fewer pieces. So I want, that would mean I'm dividing by four. I want four times fewer pieces. So if I had 16 and I'm dividing it among four by four, like how many groups of four can you make with 16? Four of them. So I'm gonna end up with fourths. And again, I have to give you four times fewer of them in order for it to equal the same amount. So four sixteenths is the same amount as one fourth. Divided it by four. Let's try this one. Eight twenty fourths. What can we divide this number by? Now, when I multiply, I can multiply by any number. But when I'm dividing, I'm a little bit more limited because I have to find a number that I can divide this, this numerator by and the denominator by. So I'm a little bit more, um, my choices are a little bit smaller, actually a lot smaller, because I'm it has to be a factor of these numbers. So let's think about what we can divide. What, what factor do these numbers have in common? I automatically see that they're halves, right? I mean, that they're even numbers so that I know I can divide them by two. Um, but is there any other numbers you see that both of these can be divided by or a factor that they both share? And I'm thinking four, right? Four times something gets me eight and four times something gets me 24, right? So they're both multiples of four. Is there another bigger one? And I'm seeing that they can both be divided by eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that one. I'll get the fewest number of pieces. 24 divided by eight is three, and eight divided by eight is one. So eight 24 is the same as one third. And that's the fewest, that's a few number of pieces, just big thirds instead of a whole bunch of 24 ths. Um, so you can divide them. I could have divided it, this 8 24 by two halves. I could have divided 8 24 by three thirds. That would have worked. It would have just given me a different number of pieces. How many pieces would I have gotten if I had divided it? Divided 8 24 by three, let's say. 24 divided by three is eight. Yeah. And eight divided by three is, mm, can't do that because only one of the numbers can be divided by three. So that's sort of like hitting a dead end with dividing to create an equivalent fraction. That's one where I have to go, mm, no, can't do that. Only one of them is divisible by three. What's another number they could be divided by? Four, let's try that. 24 divided by four is what? Six. Eight divided by four is two. So that was a fraction that could be, I could generate an equivalent fraction using dividing by four. So just be aware that you have to make sure that both denominator, numerator and denominator can be divided by the same number. Let's take this one, three fifths. So I ask myself, okay, what number what um, factor do both of these numbers share? And it's pretty evident that they don't share any. These are both prime numbers actually. So I know that they only have the factors one and themselves. So, and if I divided it over one over one, that would be a bit of a waste of time because that's not exactly, I mean, it's equivalent, but it's just the exact same fraction. So it really doesn't help us at all. So if you see some prime numbers, you might wanna be on the lookout and be alert that mm, maybe that won't work. Remember, even when both numbers are even, that doesn't mean you could divide by any number. You have to be dividing by a number that they both share. They're, they're multiples of the same. They're both multiples of the number. So just be aware of that as we're creating equivalent fractions using division.